I want to welcome all of you to the U.S. Capitol. We are here today to honor the 65th Infantry Regiment of the U.S. Army. Or, as we prefer to say, the Boring Caneers. Isn't that cool? Hey, man. Puerto Rico became a part of the United States in 1898, and soon after, Congress created a special unit of Puerto Rican soldiers. They went on to fight for our country valiantly in both world wars and in Korea. But throughout their service, they suffered persistent discrimination. For too long, their contribution to our history has been overlooked. So today, today, we are setting the record straight by giving them the highest award within our possession, the Congressional Gold Medal. I know a lot of people worked very hard to make this happen. And I just want to recognize just a few of them, the people who made this happen. First of all, Commissioner Pierre Luisi. There you are. Congressman Bill Posey. Senator Blumenthal. Senator Rubio. I also want to thank Governor Padilla. We'd like to thank Secretary Murphy and Secretary McDonald for joining us as well. Finally, I would like to point out today that we have here with us some Borkineers themselves. Jose Colon is here with us today. Manuel Severio is with us today. And John Palazzi. Where is John? Uh, I would like to add that John now lives in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Go Packers. Um, all right. <laughs> so I won't hold things up any longer, only to say to our honorees that we are forever in your debt, and this medal is long, long overdue. Thank you very much, and enjoy the program. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of the colors by the United States Army Color Guard, the performance of our national anthem, and the retiring of the colors.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as the chaplain of the United States Senate, Dr. Barry Black, gives the invocation. To our prayer, we thank you for the honor and fidelity of the U.S. Army's 65th Infantry Regiment, composed mainly of Puerto Rican soldiers that served with heroism and distinction during both world wars and the Korean conflict. Lord, we praise you for this opportunity to acknowledge their courageous contributions to America's freedom with the Congressional Gold Medal. Lord, forgive us for segregating our Puerto Rican and Latino soldiers and for being slow to acknowledge their contributions. May this Congressional Gold Medal Ceremony for the intrepid Borinqueneers remind us that all humanity is wrapped in a blanket of mutuality and tied to a single garment of destiny. Padre Nuestro, que estás en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. Send, send heaven's richest blessings upon this ceremony as you hasten the day when justice will roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. We pray in your sovereign name, amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, resident commissioner from Puerto Rico, the Honorable Pedro Peluisi. The U.S. territory of Puerto Rico faces enormous challenges. It has been difficult for my constituents and I to see the island we love suffer. And it is easy to lose spirit as the good, good name of your home is tarnished, too often associated with the negative rather than the positive. That is why, even though the Korean War ended 60 years ago, Today's ceremony could not be more timely. The American soldiers from Puerto Rico who formed the core of the 65th Infantry Regiment remind the public of the extraordinary contributions that Puerto Rico has made to this country since 1898 in times of both war and peace. The boring Kinneers remind me and the 3.5 million U.S. citizens I represent why we're so proud to be Puerto Rican at a time when our sense of pride has been shaken but never, ever shattered. We should draw strength and inspiration from their legacy and emulate their example. After all, this band of brothers overcame adversity of the most extreme sort, fighting the enemy on the front lines of the battlefield while also fighting discrimination back in the barracks. These warriors may have spoken English with an accent, but their service and sacrifice were universally understood. The men of the 65th Infantry Regiment, many of whom are here today, but many more of whom did not live to enjoy this glorious moment, represent the human spirit at its best. Brave, tough, devoted to their duty and to each other, Puerto Rico has always had this nation's back in times of crisis. It takes a special kind of patriotism to fight for a country that you love, but one that does not treat you 
equally. To the Borinqueneers, those who are leaving and those who have left us, I want to simply say thank you. Gracias por su dedicación y sacrificio, por poner el nombre de Puerto Rico en alto y por el servicio digno a los Estados Unidos de América. God bless the Borinqueneers and the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, United States Representative from the 8th District of Florida, the Honorable Bill Posey. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and especially the heroes of the 65th Infantry Regiment. This is truly a momentous day, one which will honor the gallantry of this decorated unit and the valor of each of its soldiers. During the darkest days of the Korean War, the 65th Infantry Regiment fought some of the fiercest battles under some of the harshest conditions, and they did so as the military's last segregated unit, a true testimony to their character. It was the now famous Battle of Chosen Reservoir, one of the greatest withdrawals in American history that the 65th Infantry Regiment fearlessly provided cover for the 1st Marine Division. Their actions earned high praise from General Douglas MacArthur, who said, they are writing a brilliant record of heroism in battle, and I am indeed proud to have them under my command. I wish that we could count many more like them. For its extraordinary service in the Korean War, the regiment earned a Medal of Honor, nine Distinguished Service Crosses, approximately 250 Silver Stars, over 600 Bronze Stars, and more than 2,700 Purple Hearts. Today, the Boring Caneers join the ranks of the most intrepid American warriors who have received the Congressional Gold Medal. I'd like to recognize the efforts of hundreds of people in the Boer Kinnear community whose dedicated, dedication resulted in this worthy distinction. I'd also like to acknowledge a group of exceptional students from St. Luke's Lutheran School in Oviedo, Florida. These students took it upon themselves to embrace the legacy of the Boer Kinnears and pay tribute to their achievements of the 65th Infantry Regiment. Congratulations, Boer Kinnears. Thank you for your fierce courage and exceptional service to our country. May God continue to bless you and the United States of America. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, United States Senator from Connecticut, the Honorable Richard Blumenthal. Muchas gracias. Voy a hablar un poco en español, pero no más que un poco, because I'm going to be followed by Marco Rubio, who will correct me when I get it wrong. And I want to thank Senator Rubio for his partnership in this effort, as well as my colleagues, Senator McConnell and Senator Reid, who were so instrumental in making possible this extraordinary day. There are very few magic moments in this place, but this time is one of them. And it was made possible by truly a bipartisan effort. We ought to see more like it in the United States Congress. I want to thank the Boricaneers who are here today, particularly my friends from Connecticut, Celestino Cordova and Jose Picard. Thank you for being here. They inspired me in Connecticut, and then when I visited the Boricaneers in Puerto Rico to see their history displayed in photographs, 
and to hear from them the stories of their bravery and others of men who did not come back. They are American warriors. They are American fighters and patriots in the best and bravest sense of the word. And we honor them today in a proud tradition, the tradition of the Tuskegee Airmen, the Montfort Point Marines, the Navajo Code Talkers, men who braved and overcome and defied the insult of discrimination and even segregation, who showed us how to be better Americans. The men and women of Puerto Rico are Americans, and their contribution to America's defense, and most importantly, the ideals of the American dream, the ideals of freedom and opportunity and equal rights under the law, are remarkable, not just in war, but in peace. And the Boricaneers came back from war and continued to serve and sacrifice for our great nation. We are the greatest nation in the history of the world but we are imperfect. And the Barikaneers remind us that their journey and ours will never end as long as we tolerate the imperfection of discrimination and segregation in this country. And I want to thank them for giving us this opportunity to recognize and celebrate their patriotism their courage, their strength, resilience, and resolve that will make our nation better and continue to make us the greatest nation in the history of the world. God bless you, and God bless our great country. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, United States Senator from Florida, the Honorable Marco Rubio. Thank you very much. First of all, I was very impressed with Senator Blumenthal's Spanish. And for those of you that don't speak Spanish, he basically just said he uh, saved a bunch of money on his car insurance by switching to Geico. So, <laughs> muy bueno el español, muy bueno. And I want to thank him as well for the opportunity to work with him on this very important issue. We're gathered here today uh, for a moment that's been years in the making and, quite frankly, many years overdue. And I do want to say from the outset that as a member of the U.S. Congress, I I wish we could have honored you with this medal sooner. I join all the Brinkineers present today in remembering your brothers in arms who passed away before this day could come, including those who have died since this legislation was signed by the President in 2014. It is my hope that, more than, that the more than 1,000 Brinkineers still living throughout the United States, as well as the family members of those who have fallen and departed or are missing in action, that they will know at last that their service has received the ultimate tribute from a grateful nation. Over the years, even in the shadow of unequal treatment, your regiment never faltered and never failed to prove just how valuable it is to the cause of freedom. My favorite example was Operation Portrex, when the Brinkineers were tasked with playing the role of the enemy aggressors in a military exercise they were able to halt a group of more than 32,000 American troops. And after seeing their skill, our Army commanders wisely, quickly deployed them into the heart of the Korean War after seeing their capabilities. It has been one of my great honors as a senator to be involved in the effort to secure the Congressional Gold Medal for the Berenkineers by having the opportunity to co-sponsor the legislation that passed in 2014. Today, I'd like to thank two congressionally designated liaisons to the U.S. Mint who worked to ensure that this medal would be as impressive as it turned out, Sam Rodriguez and Javier Morales, both of whom are Army veterans themselves. I would also want to echo what Representative Congressman Posey said about the St. Luke's Lutheran School in Oviedo, Florida. And several of them are here today, along with their teacher, Ms. Carla Cotto Ford, 
who was the granddaughter of two Berenkineers. Ms. Ford and her students raised thousands of dollars in their community towards an ongoing national effort to ensure that every living Berenkineer would receive a replica of the Congressional Gold Medal. The passionate, the passionate efforts of Mr. Rodriguez and Mr. Morales and Ms. Ford and her students and so many others who have labored to make this day a reality is part of what makes this medal so special. It reminds us that the legacy of past generations of Berenkineers who fought and died for America is indeed a living legacy. Today, that legacy, alive and well, reminds us that America is truly an exceptional country. Ours is a nation made up of people from all different backgrounds and all different cultures who came together as one nation because we share a common idea that everyone deserves the freedom to exercise their God-given rights. Each member of the 65th Infantry Regiment fought. They fought for that freedom not just for themselves. They fought for every man and woman and child in these United States of America. So in closing to the Berenkineers, I'd like to say congratulations on the unveiling of your well-deserved Congressional Gold Medal. And more importantly, on behalf of my staff, on behalf of my children and of the people of Florida, I say thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your courage. And thank you for fighting to make this nation the best it can be. Que Dios siempre bendiga a los Borenkineers. Que Dios bendiga a Puerto Rico. And may God always bless the United States of America. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone. Ladies and gentlemen, the Democratic leader of the United States House of Representatives, the Honorable Nancy Pelosi. Good afternoon, everyone. It's my honor to join our speaker and our leaders in the Senate in welcoming you all to the Capitol on this very special day for all of us. A privilege to have each and every one of you here along with the Secretary of Veterans Affairs, McDonald, and Acting Secretary of the Army, Patrick Murphy. I'm pleased to join uh, Senator uh, Leader McConnell and Leader Reid in this very personal gold medal award ceremony. It is such a special day to join our colleague, uh, co uh, Resident Commissioner uh, Perry Lisi, who was part of the sponsorship of the legislation and thank all of the other sponsors as well. Our advocate for this in the House of Representatives, Nydia Velasquez, who is here with us today. Mm -hmm. 
and of course, a special honor to welcome Governor Padilla of Puerto Rico to the house. Just in case everyone hadn't been introduced, we had to go over some more. It is an honor to join all of you as we bestow the Congressional Gold Medal on the legendary, proudful, dignified 65th Infantry Regiment. Honor and fidelitas, honor and fidelity, so rings the motto of this courageous regiment of Americans. First formed, as has been said, as a unit of Puerto Rican volunteers, this unit was redesignated as the 65th Infantry Regiment in 1920. With honor and fidelity, the 65th Inf Infantry became, uh, overcame prejudice and bigotry and wrote a new chapter of heroism in our shared American story. That is part of their legacy. In the Panama Canal Zone in World War I, later on the doorstep of Nazi Germany, in the defining crucible of the Korean War and beyond, Buccaneers uh, protected freedom abroad and advanced dignity for Puerto Rican and Latino Americans at home. In the Korean War in particular, the born Keeners astounded their commanders with their spectacular valor and courage. They taught lessons they enriched our nation with the strength of their service through the excellence of their example and the power of their bravery. The Buendkineer's uh, valor under fire is nothing short of legendary. And it is no accident that the United Ar U.S. Army's first Latino general in the U.S. Army, General Richard Cavazos is a proud veteran of the 65th Infantry. I believe he's with us here today. General, are you here? Please rise and be acknowledged. The first four-star general. I should speak directly to your hero heroic service, all of you, is truly one of the great American stories. It's not just about what you did then, which is a proud legacy and a dignified legacy. It's also the fact that others from the Latino American community, Puerto Ricans and others, followed in your footsteps and are a very important part of the national security of our country. I know that my colleagues would agree that wherever we travel in the world to visit our men and women in uniform, including in some of the U.S. hospitals around the world, we see and meet Latino American brave so, um, men and women in uniform who are fighting, who have fought for our country. You should take some satisfaction in your leadership role, and that is part of your legacy. As again, as uh, Senator Blumenthal mentioned, this regiment stands among some of the most honored names in American military history. Units who overcame the worst brands of discrimination for the right to defend our country. To, today, we add to the roles of our most courageous and trailblazing Congressional Mo, uh, Gold Medal honorees, the Native American Code Talkers, the Nisei 100th Infantry Battalion and the Japanese American 442nd Regimental Combat Team, Tuskegee Airmen and the Montford Point Marines. Imagine they were out there fighting for freedom. You were out there fighting for freedom while being deprived of it in many cases at home. Again, you are making America more American. To these ranks of heroes, it is our privilege to add the 65th Infantry Regiment. To the veterans of the 65th Regiment, Inf Infantry Regiment with us today, and to your families who shared your sacrifice and contribution to America, to all those around the country, thank you. Thank you for your service, your leadership, your courage. Thank you for your honor and your fidelity. Thank you for defending freedom and enriching our great democracy. Thank you for blessing America with your service. God bless you. God bless America. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Democratic leader of the United States Senate, the Honorable Harry Reid. On May 19th, I was given a unique honor, but it was 1996. I represent the United States Senate at the dedication of the Monument of Remembrance in San Juan, Puerto Rico. I'll never forget that day. I was a fairly new senator, and it was a beautiful day I can remember. The hot sun, I can remember the crowd that was there. I can still picture that dedication in my mind's eye. The new monument looked exquisite in that great Puerto Rican sky, reflected off the round granite wall that bears the names of every Puerto Rican who had fallen in defense of the United States, World War I, World War II, and Korea, and Vietnam. But what I remember most isn't the spectacle of the dedication. Rather, I'll always remember the feeling that prevailed at that dedication. The honor of those veterans in attendance, we could all feel it. The reverence for the service members who paid the ultimate price, we could feel it. And the immense gratitude the people of Puerto Rico had for their veterans. <clears throat> the same emotions are with us today as we honor the 65th Infantry Regiment. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> to be sure this honor is real late in coming, we've had a number of people say that. But in spite of the 65th Infantry Regiment's heroism and valor during the Korean War, as well as the other conflicts I've mentioned, its efforts were unrecognized for far too long by Congress and by the American people. As one member of the regiment said, and I quote, we lost so many. The American people don't know the sacrifice of so many Puerto Ricans who died in Korea. It was the bloodiest war for Puerto Rico. Close quote. The sacrifices of service members from Puerto Rico were disproportionately large. 740 Puerto Ricans died in the Korean conflict. 2,300 were wounded, many of them grievously wounded. 121 are still missing in action. The 65th Infantry Regiment paid a terrible price price for freedom, our freedom. But they also left an incredible example of service and patriotism that tens of thousands of Puerto Ricans have followed by enlisting in the armed services. It was, it was an ex exemplary service, those military folks in all those conflicts, but especially Korea. So today, all across the world, Puerto Ricans are still fighting and sacrificing for our country. Throughout the war on terror and the combined veterans, combined operations in Iraq and Afghanistan. 78 Puerto Ricans have been killed, and 378 have been wounded, all in combat. The brave men and women of Puerto Rico who serve today are following the footsteps of the 65th Infantry Regiment. They will always be remembered for their heroic efforts. They'll be remembered by their fathers and mothers and grandfathers and grandmothers, and all Puerto Ricans will remember the sacrifices of the Korean conflict, and we should do the same. And I'm confident I will, and I hope we all do. May we as a nation never forget the 65th Proud Infantry Regiment. Ladies and gentlemen, the Majority Leader of the United States Senate, the Honorable Mitch McConnell. Christmas Eve is a special time for many of us. It's an evening filled with love and anticipation, confections and devotion. That's true whether you're in Louisville or Las Vegas, Anchorage or Austin, <coughs> Seattle or San Juan. If you happen to be in San Juan one particular Christmas Eve in 1950, you might have seen families celebrating over elaborate dinners. 
You might have detected the smells of roast pork and the faint melodies of familiar songs like Silent Night. And maybe, just maybe, you might have detected a recognizable echo from half a world away, the sound of soldiers singing in Spanish the very same song. It could have been a song of gratitude for hot showers and warm meals, or a song of remembrance for comrades lost, or a song of celebration for one of the greatest withdrawals in modern military history. What we do know is this. The men singing that Christmas Eve off the coast of North Korea were proud members of the 65th Infantry Regiment, the Borenkinos. These soldiers had just faced a daunting mission, help Korea, refugees, and fellow American soldiers escape encirclement from over 100,000 communist Chinese troops troops that not only outnumbered the Americans, but carried orders to annihilate them. Outgunned and outmanned, through the, though the 65th may have been, these soldiers courageously marched forward through sub-zero temperatures, through mountainous terrain, and then to, right into heavy gunfire. Near the beaches of Hung Nam, the 65th Infantry Regiment swung into action providing rear guard assistance to the 1st Marine Division. What these soldiers achieved at the Chosin Reservoir helped thousands maneuver to safety. The men of the 65th lost many comrades, but they stayed behind until the job was done. They were among the last to evacuate on Christmas Eve. It's no wonder General Douglas MacArthur praised this regiment for its valor, determination, and a resolute will to victory. These soldiers, he said, were writing a brilliant record of achievement. It's a record that began in the sometimes hellish theaters of both World War I and World War II. It continued across fierce battles in the Korean War. And what these men achieved is all the more remarkable when you consider the other obstacles they often had to confront at the very same time. <clears throat> so we're proud today to have some of these brave men and their families here with us. We also honor the soldiers who can't be here. We remember the wounded, the missing, and those who made the ultimate sacrifice. The soldiers of the 65th Infantry Regiment distinguished themselves with a number of high honors in the Korean War. As others have said, nearly a dozen distinguished service crosses, some 250 silver stars, more than 600 bronze stars, and over 2,700 purple hearts. We add to that today with the highest civilian honor Congress can bestow. The Congressional Gold Medal is an honor that's been granted to our country's most distinguished military units, from the Doolittle's Raiders and the Navajo Code, Code Talkers to the Fighter Aces and the Tuskegee Airmen. We now present it to a group of soldiers who distinguish themselves with bravery and a determination to never stop writing that brilliant, brilliant record of achievement. Ladies and gentlemen, the Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, the Honorable Paul D. Ryan. When you start learning about the Warwick Kinnears and their history, the question that keeps coming to mind is, would you fight for a country that discriminated against you? Would you fight in an army that puts you in a segregated unit? And would you fight without any guarantee that one day, way down the line, your country would finally recognize your service? Because these men, they did that. It takes a certain caliber of man to do that. I recently heard a story that makes this point beautifully. It's about one of the men I mentioned earlier, John Palazzi. He was a doctor serving in Korea. 
One day, a Korean couple came to his aid station with a very, very sick baby. He had a severe case of pneumonia. Well, there was this new wonder drug called penicillin <laughs> that John knew, he knew that it would save the boy. But there were strict rules about its use. You were supposed to give it to American soldiers and American soldiers only. John later said, I just could not simply let that baby die. And so he gave their son an injection. Six weeks later, the couple came to visit John at his aid station, now very, very far away from where he had originally met them, and thanked him for curing their son. In exchange, they offered him a big bag of chestnuts, and he gladly accepted. <laughs> I tell you this story, just a simple story, because I think it illustrates what we admire in the Brinkineers. They showed us that time again, courage does not know color, decency does not pick sides. These men did not fight to preserve the status quo. They fought to make their country better, and they succeeded. Their decency was so plain, their courage very obvious, that now the whole country has honored them for their valor. The story of the 65th Infantry Regiment is full of heroism and sacrifice. And with this medal, the Borinconeers, we are weaving that story into this fabric of American history. And now that history is so the much brighter for it. Thank you. And now it's, it's my pleasure to invite Colonel Severio and Sergeant Major Cologne to the stage for the presentation, along with the delegation here. Ladies and gentlemen, Born and Kinnear, Colonel Manuel Siviero. Mr. Speaker of the House, honorable members of Congress, fellow Borinqueneers, <laughs> friends, thank you for the honor of allowing me to join this assembly of distinguished members of Congress to represent the 66th Entity Regiment, also known as the Borinqueneers, for which I was part. 
on behalf of the men who were members of the regiment. It is a distinct privilege for me to receive this highly prestigious award, the Congressional Gold Medal. It is a well-deserved tribute to the brave men that fought many hard battles in Korea. Those who survived, as well as those who lost their lives in combat, their devotion to duty, and many acts of valor against the enemy demonstrated their skills and their loyalty to the United States. General William Harris, a former commander of the 65th Infantry Regiment in combat in the early part of the Korean War, expressed it best when he said, and I quote, no group has greater pride in itself and its heritage than the Puerto Rican people. nor have I encountered any that could be more dedicated in support of the democratic principles for which the United States stands. <laughs> I accept this medal in the name of all living Borinqueneers, the families of those who lost their loved ones the families of over 100 missing in action and whose remains have not been recovered. Thank you again for remembering us, the 65th Infantry Regiment, for our dedicated effort and our extreme sacrifice in many cases in battles against the enemy. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Army Band and Chorus, Pershing Zone. del alma una tarde me fui hacia extraña nación pues lo quiso el destino pero mi corazón se quedó frente al mar en mi viejo San Juan adiós Oh, 
pasó y el destino burló mi terrible nostalgia y al San Juan que yo amé y ya no pude volver y pedacito de patria mi cabello blanqueó ya mi vida se va ya la muerte de ya morir alejado de ti de Puerto Rico de mi alma adiós adiós, adiós morín que en querida tierra de mi amor adiós adiós, adiós mi diosa del mar Ladies and gentlemen, the Acting Secretary of the United States Army, the Honorable Patrick Murphy. Now, how can you follow Pershing's own? I will say one thing. Let me tell you something. I thought being the Secretary of the Army was a hard job, but Sergeant and, and Pershing, you guys were awesome. I will only, only round of applause. With, with Speaker Ryan's permission, next time though, Sarge, well, we've got to get Congresswoman Nidia Vasquez from New York. She was singing the whole time. She even had Steny Hoyer dancing next to her. So, um, but honestly, first day, were they not awesome? They, they were terrific. So, first off the bat, Speaker Ryan, thank you so much for hosting us. And to all the national political leaders here, thank you so much for your leadership to make this today a reality. Um, and, and, of course, the other speakers, I want to echo their remarks, but there are some great military leaders here that are present. We have our great Adjutant General of Puerto Rico. Ma'am, thank you so much for being here. We are so proud of your leadership. <laughs> this is an historic year for our Army in that we had three women graduate from Ranger School. And there's a great general officer right there who's one of the leaders, one of the mentors of this next generation. So thank you so much, ma'am. We also have uh, the Vice Chief of Staff, the Army General Dan Allen, that is here. Sir. And, and General, uh, General Tim Cadavy, who is head of our reserves. So thank you so much, General Cadavy. Now, we are here to recognize the Buccaneers for their time in Korea. Although they have fought in two world wars, they have led in so many efforts for our nation. But there are two members of Congress that are also here that are also Korean War veterans. Sam Johnson, Congressman Sam Johnson, who I, I'm not sure if he's here or not. We also have Congressman Charlie Rangel. Charlie, thank you so much for your leadership, sir. And, and let me just say something about the Borkinese. Their service in uniform was extraordinary over generations. But as an Iraq War veteran of this generation, and now in this role, I will say it's the Korean War generation and the Vietnam generation that made sure that when my generation came home, we were welcomed with open arms. And we owe you a debt of gratitude 
for welcoming us home and make us feel like brothers. Thank you so very much, every single one of you. As, as Speaker Ryan said, it could have been easy to look down. It could have been easy to turn your back. It could have been easy to put that uniform away and not serve anymore. But every single one of you show what it means to be an American soldier, to be a soldier for life, that when you wear the cloth of our country, the love of our nation is stamped in your heart forever and you continue to serve, you continue to be civic assets in our community, all over the world. And when Speaker Ryan told that story about that young colonel over there with penicillin, sir, I saw you shaking your head because you didn't like the recognition. Our soldiers, you know, we, we're quiet professionals. I'm trying to get us to be a little bit more swag, a little bit more confidence, but let me tell you something. <laughs> you saved that boy's life. Wherever an American soldier goes in this world, we make a positive difference in your generation, in my generation, and it's hard to see it in real time. But you ask the people of Afghanistan, there's millions of girls that are going to school now that never went to school before in Afghanistan. That's because the American soldier and our troops, we have a lot to be grateful for. Now, Colonel Savario, you, your eloquent speech, we appreciate it. I will tell you, you look like an American paratrooper. I see his combat infantry badge on his soldier. Let me, let me tell you, Colonel. Dan Allen and I are paratroopers. We get you to jump out of a plane out of Fort Bryan, North Carolina, and you want to come join us. You're still in shape to do this kind of thing. I think we might need to recruit you. He does look good. Yeah, he does look good. I think he's a married man, though, but he does look very good. Um, but the heart of the Boykineers and the heart of an American soldier is what we're celebrating today. And it's an honor, as your Secretary of the Army, to be here to celebrate with each and every one of you. God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Secretary of Veterans Affairs, the Honorable Robert McDonald. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm uh, pleased to be able to add my congratulations to everyone who's had a hand in making this day happen, especially to those veterans who've earned this award through their valorous and pioneering service. My mission and the mission of my department is to care for those who have borne the battle, in President Lincoln's words, and for their families and their survivors. It's the best and the most inspiring mission in government, serving the best and most deserving clients in the world. The proof is right here among us, in the veterans of the 65th Infantry Regiment, the uh, Borkineers. This honor is long overdue. But I want you all to know that the veterans of Puerto Rico have never been forgotten by the American people. VA has been caring for them for longer than it's been a department, providing them the same care and benefits available to other veterans. Over 60,000 veterans are interred at the Puerto Rico National Cemetery in Bayamon, where the names, ranks, branches, wartime services of each one of them are etched in stone for all to see. Among them is Master Sergeant Juan Enrique Neglon Martinez, a native of Corozal, Puerto Rico. Negron en enlisted in the Army in 1948, and in April 1951 was serving in Korea with Company L, 65th Infantry Regiment, 3rd Infantry Division. When his company was forced to withdraw by enemy attack, Negron stayed behind and single-handedly stopped the enemy from seizing the roadblock his company was defending. He held his position, and he held it through the entire night, buying time for his company to regroup and successfully counterattack. And for his bravery, he was recently awarded the nation's highest award for valor, 
the Medal of Honor. I'll be in Puerto Rico later this month to visit with veterans at the VA Medical Center in San Juan and to participate in the ceremony marking the awarding of the Congressional Gold Medal to the veterans of the 65th Infantry beneath the walls of El Morro, the old Spanish fort guarding San Juan Harbor, where the 65th fired the first American shots of World War I. While there, I'll also visit the National Cemetery to pay my respects on behalf of the nation to the Brinkineers who did not live to see that day or to see this day, but who are finally now receiving the recognition they so richly deserve. They will always be remembered. That's President Lincoln's promise. That's VA's promise. And that's pr my promise as well. May God bless you all, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as the chaplain of the United States House of Representatives, Father Patrick Conroy, gives the benediction. Let us pray. Senor de la Merced, may the hands and hearts of this nation be raised in prayer and praise for this Puerto Rican unit, which served our nation and the hope of freedom for all of the world. Through three wars, the Borinquenirs chose to serve while they were still not completely welcome to share in the fullness of the American social fabric. Even so, the unit earned thousands of military honors for their service. May the breath of God uphold their noble and heroic story. May it carry to other generations and even to other nations a message to inspire citizens everywhere to serve without counting the cost. May those who made the ultimate sacrifice, those who etched out historic victories, and those who suffered personally the pain of discrimination in those dark days of our world and our nation be rewarded with success and find peace. Bless all women and men in military service, no matter their racial, cultural, or religious heritage, and their families. God bless America, and grant us peace, both in the present and with you forever. Amen.